Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, yesterday uh, we started spirochetes and we discussed syphilis. But the, but the lab diagnosis of the syphilis uh, we didn't cover. So we will cover the lab diagnosis and the treatment of syphilis. As I told you, uh, syphilis uh, is caused by Treponema pallidum, which is a spirochete. Spir it is a spiral shaped bacteria, and I told you the most important are the stages of syphilis, which are primary syphilis, secondary syphilis, then the late stage, uh, uh, late, uh, and late is further divided into early late and uh, a latent stage is further divided into early latent and late latent and then the tertiary phase and the sign and symptoms of the syphilis is in primary syphilis the first characteristic lien is a cancri which is a indurated ulcer present on the external genitalia or it may be present anywhere in the cervix or in the lips or in the oral cavity as well and then after three to six weeks, the uh, ulcer resolves without treatment and then the symptoms of the secondary syphilis develop. And what is secondary syphilis? In secondary syphilis, there is after three to uh, two to three months, the symptoms of the secondary syphilis develop. And in secondary syphilis, there is characteristic rash, which may be papillar, macular, postular or nodular rash and this rash is journalized and if this rash is present in the moist areas the lesions may enlarge and erode themselves and this is called condylometer letter and after this uh, uh, secondary syphilis one third of the patients resolves without, uh, without treatment one third of the patients are uh, free of symptoms without treatment so one third are uh, actually they uh, um, the symptoms resolve without treatment. One third then goes to the latent phase. In latent phase, there are no signs and symptoms, but the logical tests are positive. The bacteria is still present in the blood, but the signs and symptoms are not present. And then the one third further progress to the tertiary phase. And in tertiary phase, CNS involvement is present. CVS and uh, 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 cardiovascular system may be involved. If the central nervous system is involved, then there may be paresis or uh, uh, para paralysis. And if the uh, uh, cardiovascular system is involved, there may be aortic regurgitation or aneurysms. And then there is also gumatous lesions present. What are gumatous uh, lesions? They are actually the rubbery tumors and they are granulomas. So after primary and secondary syphilis, one third of the patients resolve without treatment. The symptoms resolve without treatment. And one third of the patients then progress to the latent phase. And latent phase is for, in the latent phase, the signs and symptoms are not present, but bacteria is still present in blood. And then the one third further progress to the tertiary phase. Now, we will talk about the lab diagnosis. As I told you, Traponema pallidum can also not be cultured in the bacteriological media or in the cell culture, same as the Mycobacterium leprae. 
the microbacterium leprae is a species past bacilli and it also can't be cultured in the bacteriological media same is the case with the trachinum pallidum although this is a different class of the bacteria they are the spirochetes but they can't be cultured in the bacteriological media and the diagnosis is basically on the three factors the clinical findings in the clinical findings you will see the indurated ulcer which is painless or condylometa lata is present and in the lesions you will find the spirochetes there um, first of all you will diagnose it on basis of the clinical findings and then if you see the lesions you will demonstrate the spirochetes in the clinical specimen and then there is presence of antibodies in the blood or cerebrospinal fluid as i told you in the tertiary syphilis cns involvement is present so antibodies are also present in the blood or in the cerebrospinal fluid microscopy as i told you they can't be cultured in the bacteriological media so gram staining is not useful gram staining hum nahi karte na to hum acid fast bacilli ke liye karenge na hum spirochetes ke liye gram staining karenge okay you will see uh, see the spirochetes under the direct examination of clinical specimen by dark field microscopy or by fluorescent antibody testing of the sample so how you will diagnose number 1 on the basis of the clinical findings number 2 you will see the spirochetes in the clinical samples or in the the lesions by direct field microscopy or by fluorescent antibody testing and number 3 is antibodies which are present in the blood or in the cerebrospinal fluid so as i told you there are three uh, you will diagnose on the basis of the three uh um, uh criteria uh, number one is number one is you will diagnose on the basis of the clinical findings number two you will see the micro uh, spirochetes in the clinical specimens by direct field microscopy or by fluorescent antibody staining and number three is by antibodies in the blood now comes the serological test the logical tests are further divided into specific and non specific first of all we will discuss the non specific tests which are vdrl which is venereal disease research laboratories this is an um, a vdrl is an abbreviation and it is used for the screening diagnosis and the follow up of the syphilis patient and the results can be qualitative or quantitative actually you will find the antibodies then the rapid plasma regnin test and in this test you will detect the presence of the antibodies and the antibodies uh, reg, uh, regnin antibodies are actually the mixture of igm and igg antibodies and they should not be mixed with the ige antibodies which are present in allergy so what are reg, uh, regnin antibodies they are actually igm and igg antibodies and in these tests you will find the antibodies which are specific for the uh, present in the which are present in the syphilis patient the lab diagnosis of the congenital syphilis is based on the finding that the infant has high titer of antibody in the vdrl test than the mother so in congenital syphilis you congenital syphilis you will diagnose first of all on the basis of the clinical findings and then if the titer of antibody in the vdrl test is greater in the infant than the mother then you will diagnose that this is congenital syphilis the antibody titer in the infant should be greater than the mother so then now comes the specific test we discussed the non specific test which are vdrl or rapid plasma regin test in these uh, in those tests you will actually detect the antibodies now comes the specific test which are specific for uh, trypanosoma pallidum number one is fluorescent trypanosoma antibody uh, absorption test which is fta abs which is uh, fta abs is an abbreviation which is fluorescent trypanosoma antibody absorption test and it is the most specific and the most sensitive test for 
syphilis. And then comes the Traponema pallidum hemagglutination test and Traponema pallidum immobilization test. These are the specific tests. If you only write the names of the test, this will be enough. The antibodies, and in these tests, you also find the antibodies. And the antibodies arise within two to three weeks of infection, and they remain positive for life after the effective treatment. So antibodies beta after two to three weeks of infection, they uh, uh, can be detected in the blood and they remain positive for the entire life, even after the treatment. And what is treatment? So we discussed the lab diagnosis, which is important for Treponema pallidum. You have to do a lab diagnosis. I have told three criteria. Number one is, you can't culture it in the lab, so you will diagnose it on the clinical basis. Then comes the spider sheets in the specimens, spider sheets in the lions. You will find the spider sheets in the lions and you will diagnose it either by the direct immunofluorescent antibody staining or uh, by dark field microscopy. You will not do gram staining and they can't culture it and we can't culture it in the lab. And number three is you will detect the antibodies in the blood. And how you will detect the antibodies in the blood? They are specific and non-specific tests. In non-specific tests, there is BDRL, which is venereal disease research repository test. In this test, you uh, also detect the antibodies and then the plasma, uh, rapid plasma regen test. In this test, you also detect the antibodies. So non-specific are BDRL and rapid plasma regen test. And then comes the specific test. Specific tests are fluorescent antibody. Uh, specific tests are fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test and then the treponema pallidum hemagglutination and then the treponema pallidum immobilization test. These are the specific tests. Now comes the treatment. How you will treat the syphilis? In the early stages of the syphilis, uh, which is mostly the primary stage or it could be the secondary phase, um, you will give the benzathine penicillin 2.4 million units intramuscularly once. This is not written in your books, but um, uh, you should uh, consider these slides uh, for the better understanding of the treatment. In early syphilis, benzathine penicillin should be given to 2.4 million units intramuscularly once. And then procaine penicillin uh, should be given 6, 600,000 units intramuscularly daily for 10 days. If the patient is unable to take penicillin or if he or she is allergic to penicillin, then you will give tetracycline or erythromycin. And the dose of tetracycline or erythromycin is 500 milligram four times a day by mouth or doxycycline. You, you can also give doxycycline. The dose is 100 milligram. Uh, the doxycycline dose is always 100 milligram and you will give it twice a day for 15 days and in the late syphilis or in the tertiary phases you will give the benzathine penicillin procaine penicillin tetracycline and if the patient is allergic then tetracycline or erythromycin but the dose of uh, benzathine penicillin and procaine penicillin is more in the late syphilis benzathine penicillin is 2.4 million units intramuscularly weekly for three weeks. But in the primary syphilis, we only give it once. So 2.4 million units intramuscularly weekly, every week for three weeks, not once. In primary syphilis, we only give it this dose once in the life. But in the late syphilis, you will give 2.4 million units intramuscularly weekly for three weeks and procaine penicillin, you will give 1.2 million, double the dose uh, give in the primary syphilis now or in the early uh, stages, 1.2 million units intramuscularly daily for 21 days. And if the patient is allergic or he or she can't take the penicillin, then tetracycline or erythromycin should be given which uh, the dose is 500 milligrams four times a day or doxycycline 100 milligrams two times a day by mouth for 30 days. And this ends the syphilis. I hope you 
understand this uh, disease and um, I try my level best to uh, ensure that you understand the PrEP uh, spiral genes. And now we will uh, start with the other topic. Do we have any questions? Do you hear me? Excuse me. Students? Yes, ma'am. Any questions regarding syphilis? Any questions regarding syphilis? Where are the class representatives? Vita, any question? Can we move forward to the next topic? Students, but you soon ray up, Mujay. Yes, ma'am. But up, look, soon take you name. Would a bohat come response, Milta? Hardly could egg which are bold after the lecture. Why you people are not listening? We are trying a level best to give you the proper understanding of the topic. Why you are not listening? You don't have any questions? Should I move forward? Yes, ma'am. Our next topic is actinomycetes. As I told you, whenever we start the topic, we will first discuss the important properties of the organism. Then we will discuss the pathogenesis. And then we will discuss the clinical findings, then the lab diagnosis, and then the treatment. Whenever we start any organism, first of all, we discuss the important properties of that organism. And the pro important properties of the actinomycetes are they form long branching filaments. Filaments resemble hyphae of the fungi. We discussed mycology in detail. We covered mycology and you know what is hyphae. Hyphae are actually the filamentous structures of the fungi. Actually the structure of the fungi which are filamentous. So 
the filaments that are present in uh, actinomycetes or the structure of actinomycetes resemble hyphae of fungi and they are gram positive remember actinomycetes are gram positive in the previous lessons we discussed the acid fast bacilli we discussed pyrochetes but actinomycetes are gram positive they are two medically important organisms which are actinomycete actinomyces isra is israelii nocardia asteroids remember the names i always told you remember the full names actinomyces israelii nocardia asteroides these are the actinomycetes so actinomycetes are gram positive they the structure resemble the hyphae of the fungi the structure is filamentous and it resembles the hyphae of the fungi actinomycetes is really is gram positive and sulfur granules are present in actinomyces and it is related to the tooth decay and causes actinomycosis so the organism is actinomyces is really and it causes actinomycosis as i told you you will have the questions what is your diagnosis the or the disease is actinomycosis and the organ and then the question is what is the causative organism you will have to write the causative organism in uh, not in the diagnosis in the diagnosis you will write the disease so in diagnosis you will have to write actinomycosis and the causative agent is actinomyces myces is really actinomyces are anaerobic filamentous gram positive bacillus what are bacilli bacilli are actually the rods so they are gram positive rods they are filamentous in structure and they are anaerobic so actinomyces are actinomyces israelii is anaerobic whereas nocardia asteroides are aerobic so and uh, actinomyces israelii is anaerobic filamentous and gram positive bacilli it exhibits true branching mycis is a greek word for fungus and these organisms were first uh, thought by the early microbiologists to be fungi because of their morphology and the diseases they cause the structure resembles the fungi so uh, in the um, the early microbiologists thought that they are the fungi this is the clinical specimen of the actinomycosis actinomycosis in actinomycosis you will find the pus in and in the pus there are will be sulfur granules as you uh, can see in this picture the pus is pinkish and this pinkish pus is actually due to the sulfur granules what is actinomycosis it um, it is not, uh, not highly uh, virulent and it is actually opportunistic actually actinomycosis uh, are present in the normal flora of your oral cavity uh, they can be present in the periodontal pockets dental plaque and in the tonsillar crypts but they take advantage of the injury to penetrate the mucosal barriers actually beta kya hai this they are the part of your normal flora of the oral cavity but if there uh, is any injury then they take the advantage and then penetrate to the muco mucosal barriers and uh, they uh, there may be a coincident infection uh, uh, the infection may be due to uh, the uh, decreased immunity trauma or if there is any surgery actinomyces israelii is an anaerobe that forms part of the normal flora of your oral cavity after the local trauma such as broken jaw or dental extraction it may invade tissues forming filaments surrounded by areas of inflammation so they are anaerobes they are present in the normal flora of the oral cavity but if there is any local trauma for example broken teeth dental extraction or there may be any surgery they invade the mucosal barriers and they invade the tissues and forming filaments surrounded by areas of inflammation so 
बेटा इन्वेट करेंगे ये टिश्यूज में डीप जाएंगे और वहां पे ग्रो करेंगे जब ग्रो करेंगे तो दे विल फॉर्म द फिलमेंटल स्ट्रक्चर एंड एंड दीज फिलमेंटल स्ट्रक्चर आर सराउंडिंग बाई द एरियाज ऑफ इंफ्लमेशन एंड वेन एवर देर इज इंफ्लमेशन देर इज इंक्रीज टेम्परेचर एंड रेडनेस ओवर देयर they form the hard yellow granules which are surface granules composed of a mass of filaments are formed in pus so they form hard yellow granules granules are actually the surface granules composed of mass masses of the filaments filaments um, because they uh, the structure resembles uh, the uh, structure of the fungi and the structure is filamentous structure are formed in the pus so granules or the surface granules are formed in the pus what are the clinical findings humne ye to pad liya beta ke this is anaerobe actinomyces israelia is anaerobe it is filamentous in structure it is gram positive ye teen cheeze aapne zarur yaad rakhni hai anaerobe gram positive bacilli and it is act, uh, uh, the resem uh, structure resembles that of fungi they are filamentous in structure and they uh, produces sulfur granules and they are the part of the normal flora of the overall oral cavity but if there is any trauma they invade the tissues and forms the uh, start growing form the filamentous structures and this filamentous structures is surrounded by inflammation so there may there will be hard non tender swelling jab ye grow karenge beta तो जैसे जैसे ये ग्रो करते जाएंगे फिलामेंट्स फिलामेंट स्ट्रक्चर है ना तो जैसे जैसे ग्रो करते जाएंगे सराउंड उसकी सराउंडिंग में इंफ्लेमेशन भी होगी एंड देर विल बी हार्ड नॉन टेंडर स्वेलिंग दैट डिवेल्प स्लोली एंड इवेंचुअली ड्रेन पास थ्रू साइनस ट्रैक्स तो बेटा स्वेलिंग एंड नॉट देर विल बी नॉन टेंडर स्वेलिंग एंड दैट पास ड्रेन थ्रू द साइनस ट्रैक्स सबसे पहले क्या है बेटा स्वेलिंग होगी उसके बाद पास ड्रेन करेगी साइनस ट्रैक से एक्टिनोमाइकोसिस अपेयर एज अ हार्ड नॉन टेंडर स्वेलिंग दैट डिवेल्प स्लोली एंड इवेंचुअली ड्रेन पास थ्रू साइनस ट्रैक्स तो ये ग्रो करेंगे बेटा स्वेलिंग होगी नॉन टेंडर हार्ड स्वेलिंग एंड दे फॉर्म द साइनस ट्रैक्स और पास कहां से ड्रेन होगी उस साइनस ट्रैक से ड्रेन होगी उस स्वेलिंग से ड्रेन नहीं हो रही होगी देर विल बी अस ट्रैक एंड पास विल ड्रेन फ्रॉम दैट साइनस ट्रैक नॉट फ्रॉम दैट स्वेलिंग इन अबाउट फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेज द इनिशियल लियर रिजॉल्व इन्वॉल्व द फेस एंड द नेक फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेज द लियर इन्वॉल्व द फेस एंड नेक बिकॉज इट इज प्रेजेंट इन द ओरल कैविटी इट इज अ पार्ट ऑफ दर नॉर्मल फ्लोर ऑफ द ओरल कैविटी एंड इन द रेस्ट द चेस्ट और एबडोम कैन बी इन्वॉल्व pelvic actinomycosis can occur in women who have retained an intrauterine device for a longer period of time and actinomyces israelii and arachnia species are the most common causes of actinomycosis in humans and the disease is non communicable non communicable means it can't be transmitted from one person to another तो ये ट्रांसमिट नहीं होती इट कान बी ट्रांसमिटेड फ्रॉम वन पर्सन टू अनदर इट इज एक्चुअली द पार्ट ऑफ द नॉर्मल फ्लोरा एंड इफ देर विल बी एनी ट्रॉमा और एनी इंजरी टू द ओरल कैविटी देन दे इन्वेड द डीपर टिश्यूज एंड देन फॉर्म्स द नॉन टेंडर स्वेलिंग एंड वट इज प्रेजेंट इन द नॉन टेंडर स्वेलिंग एक्चुअली द फिलमेंट फिलमेंट एक्चुअली the bacteria which have the filamentous structure actinomyces is actually a filamentous structure and in the swelling there will be filaments surrounded by the inflammation and pus will drain from the sinus tracts us swelling se pus drain nahi hogi beta pus will drain from the sinus tract actinomycosis is actually chronic separative granulomatous disease of cervical facial thoracic or abdominal areas and there is development of hard non tender swelling as i told and beta aap isme dekh sakte hain in pictures mein there is hard non tender uh, there is hard uh, 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 swelling you will uh, find in these pictures in the face and you can also appreciate the sinus tract from which the pus is draining in the second picture 
they form the indurated meshes with fibrous walls and central locations with pus and pus contains the surface granules as i told you and the surface granules are greatly yellow white and the average diameter is 2 mm and composed of mineralized mycelial mass what is mycelial mass is it actually the um, mycelial mass is actually uh, the mass which resembles the structure of fungi but they are bacteria actinomyces israelii is actually gram positive bacilli chronic infection they form the burring sinus sinus tracts to the skin or the mucous membranes and they discharge the purulent uh, material or the pus from the sinuses this is the pus of actinomycosis the pus is draining from the uh, sinus tract and you can find it a pinkish appearance but uh, surface granules are actually yellow white this is actually you can uh, appreciate the pus draining from the sinus the swelling is farther from the sinus tract how you will diagnose bahut aasan hai beta sabse pehle aap logo ne staining karni hoti hai kisi bhi organism ke liye aapko pata hai and this organism is actually gram positive so in the when you will sabse pehle hum specimen lenge स्पेसिमेन आपको पता है कि बेटा जब भी हमने लेना है उस साइड से लेना है जहां पे आपको साइन सिम्टम्स प्रेजेंट है तो यू विल फर्स्ट टेक द स्पेसिमेन ऑफ द पास एंड यू विल सी द ग्राम पॉजिटिव ब्रॉड इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द सर्फर ड्रेन्यूज यू विल टेक द स्पेसिमेन फ्रॉम द पास विच इज विल बी ड्रेनिंग फ्रॉम द साइनस ट्रैक एंड यू विल फाइंड द ग्राम पॉजिटिव ब्रॉड विच आर प्रेजेंट इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द सर्फर ड्रेन्यूज दो चीजें जहन में रखनी है whenever you will take the specimen you will culture and you will see under microscope gram positive rods and also the surface granules and as i told you this organism is anaerobic so you will give the uh, you will grow it in anaerobic environment and for the anaerobic environment we have anaerobic jar you will uh, you uh, saw it in the lab we have the anaerobic jar so you will grow it in anaerobic environment and you will find the uh, gram positive uh, bacilli with uh, and in, there are uh, surface granules present in the pus and you will uh, the third uh, and the uh, third step you can also do the immunofluorescent staining so what is actinomyces israelii actinomyces israelii is anaerobe gram positive bacilli present in the normal flora of your oral cavity and the structure resembles that of the fungi filamentous structure of the fungi structure kaisa hai bilkul fungi ki tarah ka isliye previously jo microbiologists the they thought that this is a fungi not a bacteria but they are anaerobe they are gram positive the structure resembles that of fungi they are present in the normal flora of the oral cavity if there is any trauma or any injury then they invade the deeper tissues and start growing forms the filamentous structure and it they are surrounded by inflammation forms the hard non tender swelling most of the times in the neck or in the face and they they form the sinus tracts and the pus will drain from the sinus tract and how you will diagnose you will diagnose you will take the pus specimen and you will find the gram positive rods in the presence of the surface granules and you will grow as i told you this is anaerobe so you will grow it in the anaerobic environment in the anaerobic jar which we have in the labs and uh, you can also do the immunofluorescence staining okay uh, students we uh, now finish our topic any questions thank you sorry ma'am any questions students okay ma'am allah hafiz thank you